Hello and welcome to the Texas Truck Channel. And yes, we are on track today for reasons unrelated to this review. And it's a good time to walk around the Ford Explorer XLT. This is a 2021 model. It's blue, it's a four banger, and it's all wheel drive. Now it's $45,000, so it's not the loaded one, but it is very well equipped. So we're gonna walk around and show you some features that don't make our normal full reviews, and this is a good opportunity to cover this vehicle, which is actually a support vehicle as well for an event we're working. It's been a champ for that. So let's bring it around the nose. Obviously, it's great, a great grill. It's a good bug stopper um, for Texas highways. If you live out here, you know exactly what we're talking about. It gets that done very well. We do have no cameras in the front of this. We do not have the 360 cam on this. We have a back camera only. And you know what? It's been totally fine. And the visibility lines of this are good enough that you don't really have to have it to park it. I haven't had problems parking this like we do with some of its competitors. So that's a good thing there. Um, styling wise, we have these Explorer headlights. I love how Ford has embedded things in the headlights. It looks really cool. Very subtle, but we like that. Um, we do have the LED fog lights and LED headlights as well. And they're good. They're not as good as Mazda's. Mazda's are the following headlights, which are amazing. And these are bright, but they don't really track where you're going, but really no complaints. Coming down to the wheels and tires, we're running on 20 inch wheels. These are dirty, but you can tell they're an anthracite color. They look really good. And these are rolling on Michelin 255-55R20 highway tires. And they're the Primacy AS, they're all seasons. They're very quiet, they grip quite well. Uh, really no complaints, the Michelin's just a good tire. Just gets it done. Uh, the brakes are four-wheel disc, and we have not had any fade on these at all. And it's pretty awesome, because sometimes these vehicles aren't cut for it. It makes me think that this can probably tow more than it lets on, so happy about that. You do have felt lining, and that's part of what makes it quiet on the highway, and it's done a great job there. So before we get to the interior, let's, let's get a good profile here. This group has the roof rack. There are not crossbars with it, but this is a mounting point for all the accessories you would ever want. So roof racks for kayaks, for bicycles, whatever you may have, you can do it right here. Let's check out the rear. All right, we're at the rear, and here's the most important part. This puppy is all-wheel drive. Well, sorry, four-wheel drive. Wait, but not four by four. What that really means is that it's full-time four-wheel drive with a one-speed transfer case. That means you cannot decouple it and make it two-wheel drive. It also means that the split from front to rear is determined by the mode that you're driving in. And we, there's actually a, a gauge on the dash, which we're assuming is correct-ish, and it splits it pretty good. Um, this is a real drive based platform, and that is why it drives as well as it does. But you, you, you're not gonna climb mountains with this. It doesn't have a two-speed transfer case. It doesn't have the lift or the approach angle for it. This is appropriate for the segment. It's gonna kill in snow. It's gonna do great in wet weather for sure. Tons of grip. In fact, we've run it on some back roads and it's better than you think. Pretty happy with that. Now, one thing that I really wanna just kinda kick forward in the chin with are these exhaust tips. While they do look real, they are not. They come out right here. And the whole point of that is to make sure that you don't have carbon buildup on the exhaust tip. Something that happens with modern turbo engines is they run a little bit rich sometimes and you get a little bit of carbon buildup. Ford decided to solve that by tipping down and putting a faux tip on there. Now, it looks like an old tip, looks like a real one, whereas a lot of cars have fake ones, but these are actually still fake, it's a little disheartening. I'm upset about that, but that's okay. You do have your sensors up back, it does have backup radar and your backup camera. This one has a sprayer for it as well to clean it, which is kind of cool. If you ever have an older vehicle, they usually don't have that and they get dirty, your camera doesn't work. So let's check out the guts. This is a three row configuration. Everything's down right now, but it's super simple, nothing power. You just pull it up and it works just like that. To bring it back down, that's it, it goes down. Um, we have a bunch of debris back here. We've been supporting an event, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, you do have underfloor storage, and there are some brackets here that you can put different accessories in here to divide it. These are not that. Um, and these side panels come off if you need to. And then this tray also can go in the bottom level and make it a lower floor. So you bring your load floor down and make it deeper. So if you want that, you can do that. Pretty cool with that. Let's go to the second row. Here we are on the second row and we have captain's chairs. And I want to point out the center console right away because Craig and I have debated this quite a bit. It's a lot like the Toyota Highlander, whereas it has a on the floor mounted cup holder arrangement and organization tray, but it's strong enough your kids can step on it and make a mess of it and not break it. But you don't have a luxurious style high console like the Pathfinder has or the CX-9 Mazda has. We both have come around and realized that just maybe the bench is the way to go. Just a thought. But the good news is when these seats are up, you can get to the third row, good access, no problem there. That is nice. You also have a lot of storage for camera gear, Texas Truck Channel stickers can go right here. 
it's all good. In the rear, we do have AC climate control, which is pretty standard these days. Um, this is not an auto climate in the rear, but it can match what is done in the front by the driver setting, so that is cool. You do have chargers, traditional 12 volt, which no one seems to need anymore. I don't know of anyone that smokes anymore. And then also USB and USB-C in the back. We like that and good cubbies. Something I do want to point out, we do not have the pano uh, moonroof in here and it is really, really quiet on the highway. And also I have a mile of headroom up here, even in the second row. And I'll tell you right now, it's competitors can't all do that. That's pretty neat. Roof AC, this matters if you have kids in a rear facing child seat. They will not melt in the Texas heat. That is really, really nice. I like that a lot. So with that covered, let's get to the business end up front. Ah, these seats are soft and comfortable. Remember that guy? These are Syntex seats. They're not actually leather. They're basically a nice vinyl, but you know what? They're really nice and comfy. The downside is they are not air conditioned. So if you're in a warm climate, that's gonna be an issue. They are heated though. So if you're in a cold climate, that will not be an issue. Now I'm gonna start it up so we can see everything in here. And turn all the stuff down. Okay, so you have your start button right there under the AC vent, kind of a funky spot, but it's out of the way and it works. The cluster, I like it quite a bit. It mirrors that of the Ford Maverick. Good display in the middle, tack on the left where it should be, analog speedo on the right. It just works. Temp down the left, fuel on the other side. If you've been in a modern Ford, you're gonna be right at home with everything here. Um, we've been averaging mid to low 20s on this thing. Uh, you can get it lower than that, but that's kind of where we've been hanging. We've been doing a lot of idling today, so that's come down. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward. The steering wheel is very nice. It's a supple leather wrap, which I really like that. Ford make that standard on everything, including your XLs. They need to be that way. We like that. All out of the way, you have the rotary dial and drive modes. That's the last thing I want to talk about. You have your auto on off here. This is traction control. And you do have hill descent control, which helps going down slippery slopes. Now, let's show the drive modes. As you spin this thing, it'll bring up a dial. And you have normal, eco, sport, tow haul, and you go all the way back the other way for your slippery and inclement weather conditions. I'll say sport is nice because it holds shifts really sharp. Um, there are no paddles in here or any way to select a gear, so you have to rely on the modes to get it right. Tow haul is very livable if you want to have a little more aggressive shifting, but it's not too aggressive. And honestly, I've been driving an Eco because that's the softest shifting out of all of them. I've noticed that in normal mode, it's a little bit herky-jerky with a 10-speed auto. That's just the reality of it. Um, I'm not sure why, but the Eco mode does pretty much solve that. So with that covered, thank you for watching Texas Truck Channel, and stay tuned for many more trucks and SUVs on this show. Take care.